Hello, contractors, and welcome to Toolbox for the Trades. My name is Jackie Aubel, and today I am chatting with Devin Thompson, the owner of Thompson Family Plumbing. Devin and I spoke about so many things, including how to grow your leadership skills, how to overcome comparison anxiety, and how to strengthen your mental health. This was such an honest and vulnerable conversation, and I hope you find inspiration from it like I did. Enjoy. Devin Thompson, you are the owner of Thompson Family Plumbing in Hesperia, California, and in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Today, we're going to be talking about growing your leadership skills, the pitfalls of comparison anxiety. I'm so excited. And adopting a thriving mindset. I'm so excited to welcome you to Toolbox for the Trades. Well, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to have this girlfriend Gab with you. I've been waiting for this. So let's get to it, girl. I know, please. I hope that we did not isolate anyone that doesn't feel like this girlfriend gap will be uh, relevant to them because this is going to be a great girlfriend gap. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be I, a great girlfriend gap. I agree. I think the things we're going to talk about is applicable to all humans. And you and I were just talking off the air about how we've been feeling this week and how we have to overcome those things. So I want to bring everybody into this conversation and just show everybody we're all trying our best, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. So, but before we even get into all the good stuff, let's kick it off with an icebreaker. I would love to know if you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be and why? Oh my gosh. With AI and technology right now, I would love to have a better understanding of like coding and computer programming, just because I'm the type of person where if I see somebody else doing it, I'm curious and I want to learn and I want to know the whys and the hows and our technology right now in the trades is taking off. And I feel like I want to kind of pick up that skill just so I can better understand and how I can implement it into my business or my life just to make my life easier. So yes. definitely computer programming. Yes, 100%. I had a great episode that we recorded. I forgot when, but it was with Amanda Triolo and Bree Skiffington. And we talked about using chat GPT to optimize your business and to help with all these things. And I know there's AI tools flying all over the place and I'm trying to carve out time to identify good ones. So I'm right there with you, sister. Um, it's, it's really crazy how far technology has gone. Yeah. And how lucky were you to get the two of them on an episode? I mean, the two of them are just leading this trail for all of us in the industry, I love I love that episode. I did listen to it. It was great. Oh, Brianna, I hit her up in the DMs immediately. I was like, I want to know more. She's helping me with stuff on my end. So that's why I really love things like this because we're meeting all these great people in the industry and we're able to help each other just with a little quick DM. You're making a huge difference in somebody's life. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy you did it. You're going to love working with her. She's fantastic. Um, so let's get into it. Tell me, how did you get into the trades? Well, my husband is a plumber. I mean, I may be a little biased when I say that my husband is absolutely the best plumber. Some of you guys may know him as OG Plum God on Instagram. He's super passionate. He loves plumbing. Uh, he started plumbing. We've been married 15 years, what, 17 years ago. He started out as an apprentice, had zero knowledge, but he luckily picked it up really quickly. And he started to gain, you know, his speed and his momentum in the trades by the time he was um, in the field for about four and a half years, he was top sales technician. He was doing really good. And I did, you know, the really nice wife thing. I was going to say mom thing, uh, you know, wife thing that we do for, as a partner is when they come home, they want to talk about their day and they're giving you a play by play of all the things that happened. And I didn't realize at that time I was actually, you know, practicing my own knowledge and I was learning from him to help you know, run this company with him. So I, over those years, I was learning about things like what's a rooter. I don't know. Like, why do people call it rooter? <laughs> I thought it was crazy. And he's telling me, you know, about all these plumbing applications and he was indirectly my, my trainer and I didn't realize it. So thanks to my amazing husband, he brought me into the trades. That is so cool. You mentioned OG plum God. I do know that handle. Uh, he has quite a following, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's been, you know, this passionate Instagram man for about six years and his platform is just to be a normal person. You know, he doesn't jump on there trying to pretend like he knows all the plumbing stuff. Um, you know, not, you know, he, he really wants to give people an opportunity to be inspired. He wants people to know that just because you're alone in the truck every day, you're not actually alone, that you do have people in the trades that want to help apprentices learn. And if maybe you're not comfortable talking to, your managers, or even, you know, if you have some issues in your market, sometimes we're not comfortable reaching out to competitors. I don't know a lot of people that are comfortable calling up their competitors. If you have that, great. 
I do have a really great competitor here in Lake Havasu City. It's Air Control. Amanda Zink is a great owner. Luckily, I got that girl here. Uh, but some people, they're not comfortable reaching out to competitors when they're having issues. So my husband himself started his platform just by reaching out to other people. And then it just built from there. I'm super grateful that I have this guy that just keeps me going in the trades, keeps me passionate, keeps me positive. That's amazing. So when did he bring you on? When did you go from apprentice to co-owner of these businesses of Thompson well, Family Plumbing? It's a really great story. I was kind of saying how he was doing well within, you know, his first couple of years. And he was at ARS Rescue Rooter for years, top sales guy, getting the plaques, feeling great. And then he moved to a different company in Southern California out of Ontario called All Pro Plumbing. Great shop there as well, All Pro Plumbing. They're service tight users as well. And he was, you know, doing great there as well. And he came to me and said, you know, I'd really like to get my contractor's license. And when he had first came to me, I was extremely apprehensive. I was nervous. You know, I was thinking about the what ifs and understanding that once we left that security blanket of being an employee to then being an employer, a lot thing, a lot of things in our life were going to change. And I reflected on it for a couple of days and my initial reaction was going to be no. But then I really sat back and I realized, you know, uh, I love my husband. And if this is something that he wants to do, I want to help support him. And he hasn't let me down yet. He's always impressed me. He's always pulled through. And let's just take this leap of faith. So he did. He went and took his contractor's test in California. He passed. And then he got fired. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. That sounds delightfully fun. And you had children at this time too, correct? Yeah, we had we had three children. So in California, the way that the contractor state license board works is you cannot have an active license if you're operating under someone else's license. So those of you that are listening, that's how California contractor law works is you're cool. lucky enough as a technician, they don't require for you to have your own license. They allow you to work under somebody else's. So once he had passed his license, he wasn't operating within those guidelines of the CSLB. And the owner of the company had called him into his office one day. His name is Rick Black. And he said, John, um, I had heard that you had started your own company and you know I have concerns. My husband had then addressed him and said, I want to promise you, you know, my intention is still here. My focus is still here. I, I don't have any customers. I'm not making any money yet. And one of the best lines I'll never forget, and this is probably a really great statement of motivation for both of us, is he turned to my husband and he said, well, sometimes you just need a little push. And he was terminated. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What a way to put, well, you mentioned, you name dropped this man. So I'm assuming that this was a positive, it was a net positive for the family you know, overall. It was a huge positive. You know, I have, my, my life has been really interesting to where I've had people come into my life through childhood and then they pop back up later and I'm having these experiences with them or I'm learning things and I'm getting you know, these, these, this great information that I don't understand why. So Rick Black, the owner of All Pro Plumbing, his brother was my stepdad growing up. Yeah. What? Yeah. So when I oh was younger, gosh. yeah, when I was younger, I used to go to All Pro Plumbing when they were a much smaller shop. Yep. Used to go to All Pro Plumbing. And I remember thinking like, oh, this plumbing thing's lame. You know, I was like 12, 13 years old thinking like, plumbing, like whatever, and didn't realize that one day my husband would be lucky enough to work for All Pro Plumbing and for Rick Black. So I felt really grateful that he had kind of pushed my husband in a positive way, because if he hadn't, I don't know if we ever would have taken that leap. Yeah. I mean, it's a big leap to take. And I find that in the stories that I've collected on the show, I find that there is, there's a ton of risk when you go into business for yourself and you're unlocking this whole new chapter of your life where, and like you said, your husband was doing so well as he was top tech, a top salesperson doing really great. Um, and he could have easily been fine just doing that and supporting the family on that salary and keeping you guys happy. So it's always difficult to leave something that's comfortable. Uh, yeah. even if it's not really reaching your potential and taking that risk is so big. It is. And believe me, I have days where both he and I will look at each other and just say like, I don't know how we've been able to do this as long as we have. I don't know. I mean, are we, are we psycho? Like what's wrong? Like what's wrong with, us? Uh, you know, because there's so much and it's constant and everyone's looking for you for answers and one thing I've really learned is if people are looking for you for answers, that's a privilege that God is giving you. 
And I'm really big about leadership and self-development only recently because I realized that that was something that I was lacking as well. And I realized that being a leader, you're also part of a ministry. People Mm. think that ministry is just, you know, in the context of religion or church, but that's not what it is. The actual definition of, of ministry is serving other people. You know, when a lot of people first start their business and we're guilty of this, you're going into it for selfish reasons. You're thinking like, oh, my life is going to be easy. I'm going to make more money. I don't have to listen to a boss. I'm going to be able to take vacation when I want. And you're operating in this really selfish mentality for a while. And then you get to this point and you realize the true success comes from actually empowering other people. And yes. that's when you really start to grow. And that's when you really start to get that freedom and that flexibility that you were craving when you first started your business. Yes, 100%. I'm so happy that you you did my segue for me going into leadership <sighs> skills. Um, you're so good at this. Uh, but oh, actually, girl, it's very interesting. You. It, it yeah, you truly deserved. Loved your, love your energy. It's very interesting. So now I've been in the trades through Service Titan since 2017. We saw this giant spike in business in 2020, 2021 for obvious reasons. And now we're kind of seeing businesses going back to normal, maybe maybe a little bit trending down because all this old this installation work that was supposed to happen in 2023, 2024, people pushed it to 2020, 2021. And yeah. I was chatting with Tom Howard and he had mentioned to me that you know the businesses that are performing the best right now that are still growing and are super profitable are the ones that have excellent leadership. And Mm -hmm. so I think it's great that you and your husband identified it, that that was a need for you guys to grow. So tell me about that journey of like identifying it's time to step into our leadership shoes. And I want to know like how you went about going on that journey. Like, how do you even start? Cause it's such a nebulous thing. Leadership is a term thrown out all the time. And I I would just love to hear your perspective. Well, you know, to be honest, it was about realizing the things we were doing wrong. Uh, you know, I think in the early stages of our business, we both were operating with this, this, with this mentality that, um, you know, we're not teachable. We have all the answers because we're in this mm-hmm. position. And I don't want to really speak for my husband. So I'll speak for myself on that. Uh, we actually had our own podcast and show called Beyond the Service. And we were on, yeah, we were on YouTube. You guys can look it up now. Um, I will tell you, I learned a lot from watching myself in those videos. And I did a lot of self-reflection based on the advice and what I was saying to people. And I realized I really don't know a lot about what I'm saying. I am just playing a a role because I feel like this is the person I should be. And it it took, it took, yeah. I mean, and it took a lot of self-reflection to realize I have to really dig deep and I need to figure out my whys. Why am I doing this? And I need to to look at what my blind spots are. And I was really fortunate enough. We joined Nexstar a couple of years ago, and I had the privilege of attending a senior leadership class. It was taught by a gentleman named Jack Tester and the CEO of Nexstar. His name is Julian Scranton. Mm -hmm. And they had us all do an exercise in this class. They had um, sent a survey to us and they said, send this to the three people that you work with the most at work. And in the survey, it had a list of maybe 50 words. And it said, whether the, you know, choose 10 of the top three great things or characteristics or traits that Devin has. And then on the next one, it says, choose the top 10 negative traits that Devin has. And then it gets all that information. It compiles the top three. And it really made me realize I was not taking advantage of my opportunities. I was just pretending like I knew because I didn't want to reflect or face the fact that maybe I didn't have all the answers. Maybe I wasn't doing everything right. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for that experience and for the people that have stood beside John and I and gave us those really honest conversations. We had to learn how to be better active listeners and listening to the people that are working so hard in our organization about how we can be better and just really realizing we don't have to have all the answers. We can we can create this amazing collective genius with all of our team members. And that's what it's really about right there. It's not about John and Devin Thompson. It's about all of these great people. That right there is Thompson Family Plumbing. That is not us. It's them. That's awesome. And I love that sometimes when people will get 
information like that, like it sounds like you got, they could be very defensive against it, but it sounds like you were in the right place to receive it and you were very open to receiving it. If I may, and we can not answer this if you don't want to, what was something that was so surprising? What was something that you learned about yourself from doing that survey? I think for the most part, I have a really great um, ability of self-awareness. The things that they had told me were things that I already assumed about myself. I just thought that I wasn't showing them that side of me. Oh, I thought I was maybe able to conceal those things about myself. And the top three things were um, impatient, um, suspicious, and oh my gosh, I can't remember the other one. Demanding. That's not good to hear from your team. Those yep. things, hearing hearing the bad things about you as an owner is more important than hearing the good. It's It's more important than the good. And I'll tell you why we have no problem sitting across the table from one of our employees and giving them a review and telling them where their shortcomings are and their blind spots are, but who's doing that to us, the owner. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I am always on a journey to find true feedback. Truly. It's to a point that I, I really try to invite it, but I, I really love this idea of an anonymous survey. <laughs> Yeah. Like, hi, you've interacted with Jackie Abel in the last five years. What were your thoughts? Um, <laughs> I just feel like I would learn so much about that because we are, we're blind to ourselves. Like we're in our psyche, people aren't. And I think sometimes you think that you're covering some, something up and you actually aren't covering it up as well as you think you may be. So I, I really, I have to give you so much credit for taking that, taking that slice of humble pie and then deciding to work on it. Cause I think that shows a ton of growth, a ton of self-awareness. So bravo you and John. Thank you. I'm still eating that pie every day, trying to figure out how I'm going to, you know, just get smaller pieces of it because we're all a work in progress all, all the time. I mean, this morning I woke up, I had anxiety. I was super stressed out. My husband's doing this large project and I'm thinking, how am I going to get kids to school? How am I going to look good on camera for all of you beautiful people? I mean, these are things that we, we're all thinking about. And it's just a matter of really focusing on the gratitudes and the great things. My husband's so good at that. I'm not as good. He's better. Uh, but it's just when you when you have anxiety, my therapist tells me when you have anxiety, look at your gratitudes, because that's something yep. that that's something that, you know, won't change. Be grateful for the great things that you have around you. Yeah. Gratitude, regular gratitude practice, truly as someone who's trained as a therapist and as someone who also deals with anxiety uh, and who doesn't do gratitude as much as I probably should. Yeah. It, it's a game changer. Like whenever I'm feeling crunchy, it's like just writing out, like, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for music. I'm grateful for bubbly water. I'm grateful for meeting random dogs on my walks. You know what yes. I mean? Like finding those little things can be really helpful, but it just trains your mind. Uh, Cause I think, you know, uh, I want to say I'm pulling from science right now, but I could also <laughs> just be pulling from like a newspaper article. Our, the way that humans have evolved over time, our brains are hardwired for survival. So we're hardwired for finding things that are threats, you know? Yep. And I think we really have to be intentional about looking for the good things in life. And if not, we can find ourselves being really gloomy and doomy a lot of the time. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad you brought up uh, anxiety because I want to talk about comparison anxiety. This is one of the things you and I talked about when we first chatted because the trades, oh my gosh, they love a Facebook group. They love being on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And I really want to tell you, uh, talk with you a little bit about your thoughts on mental health and comparison anxiety in the trades. Like, what are your thoughts on this? What, uh, what are some of your hot takes, if you will? Well, comparison anxiety is a real thing. We have all of these really great Facebook pages where everybody's out there sharing their best day. You know, my guys hit this much in revenue. My guys sold this, this many memberships. And it makes you feel like your wins that you were excited about are not even anything to celebrate because someone's doing 10 times more volume than you. And it makes you feel like, oh my gosh, the things that I was proud about, now I feel like I'm not doing enough. So then you're looking for ways on like, okay, now I need to do this with my team. And how am I going to scale to get on this person's level? Because if this person can do it, I must be able to do it, right? And it's hard because I think that before social media and before we had such a great community, I'm not, I don't want to downplay our Facebook communities and our Instagram 100%. community because yes. they're great. They're really great. 
But I think that what I'm seeing, and, and I feel this too, and that's why I feel comfortable talking about it, is you're always comparing somebody else's positive wins to your deficit. Losses. Yeah, yeah. You're, comparing, you're comparing someone's highlight reel to your actual life. Yes. Uh, and it's hard because you wake up and you feel great and then you check a message and you're like, wow, I'm not doing as good as I thought. I would say reach out to people that are on the same level and create a support system with them and just be that reassurance to each other and really celebrate those little those little wins because we're all here trying our best. My husband said to me the other day and I had shared this with you and it really just, you know, a light bulb went off in my head. He said, "You may feel like you're losing, but don't forget you may be at the bottom of the top." And you cannot forget how far you've come from where you've started. He said, number one, you took the leap, which most people are too afraid to do. And number two, you're still doing it. You haven't given up. We're still doing it. We're still working hard to change people's lives, empower people. And honestly, that says so much about you. I keep talking about my husband because he he is my support system. <laughs> He's my full-time therapist. Yeah. Um, you know, people, a lot of people don't see that side of OG Plum God, but he, he is a really loving, sensitive, positive man. And he always, oh. he's my voice of reassurance. I think it's really important when you find yourself in that comparison anxiety to think about comparing yourself to yourself. All right. Instead of comparing oh. who I am to an avatar, uh, a couple States away, I'm going to compare myself to where I was five years ago. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Look how much I've grown. I think that's really the only thing to do. I mean, besides looking at your gratitude, like how do you overcome comparison anxiety besides gratitude lists and talking to John? You know, I would say just giving myself the, the confidence that I know that I have staying physically active exercise is such a powerful tool that a lot of people do not utilize. And I don't like drinking alcohol. I, I stopped drinking about three years ago. I'll drink occasionally, but I just found, you know, if you have a sober and if you have a um, healthy lifestyle, your mental health follows. How funny and ironic is that, right? You're eating uh, good, <laughs> you know, you're eating good in your mind. Yeah, you know, who, who would have thought? So just making those changes, um, just quitting drinking altogether really improved my mental health. And it helped me realize what was important and that's my family and that's my team. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that over the years with Toolbox for the Trades, I wanted to interview people to talk about how they run their business, but it is always comes back to leadership and the self. And it's crazy to me how sobriety has actually become this theme in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Ishmael famously came on about a year ago talking about how he got sober and that was a total game changer for him. I too am not drinking alcohol. I probably am not going to continue drinking alcohol. I, I decided to take a break. Thank you. It's very hard, by the way, mm -hmm. for anyone listening. It's not like an easy thing to do. And it's a very personal decision. So I don't want any mm -hmm. of my listeners to think that I am excluding them if they choose to drink. It's a very personal choice. Yes. Um, but it's so funny how like to run in a successful, the more I do this show, the more I'm learning that to run a successful, profitable business, you have to get right with yourself first. Yes. And you can't be, you can't be running a successful business half baked. It's really hard. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm I really, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm digging sobriety. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that it's been a good thing for you too. Yeah, me too. I mean, I lost 15 pounds when I stopped drinking and I remember, you know, being in the thick of it and thinking like, I don't know why I can't lose weight. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to spin class at five 30 every day and I'm eating a salad and for lunch and I'm barely eating at dinner. And then I realized my calories were being consumed in alcohol that entire yep. time, that entire time. And then when I cut it back, I started feeling better full circle. I was able to have better relationships with the people that I love because I wasn't prioritizing alcohol. I wasn't, you know, getting off from work and coming home and just cracking open a white claw and looking for the next. Now I get off, I'll go take a bath because I need to relax a little bit. I get out and I'm ready to spend time with my kids and be the best version of myself that I can, the best mom that I can when before, I would be too busy trying to drink because I was so stressed. And yeah. now, now I feel the best version of myself. Um, there's a excellent book that I'm just going to share. Uh, this is not a sobriety podcast, but you know what? I'm really liking this topic. And in case anyone out here could be, could benefit from this, 
Um, there's a wonderful book called The Naked Mind, which is all about kind of the what we've been conditioned to believe about alcohol consumption. And one of them is that alcohol helps you re relax, which is the complete opposite. It actually like jacks up all of your hormones. So you actually are more anxious and more stressed. Yeah. So 100 percent agree with you there. Um, mm -hmm. going back to the industry a bit, and because you're so open about mental health, this is a question I've asked some big wigs in the industry, and I would love to hear from you. Not that you're not a big wig in the industry, but I actually think you're a big wig in the industry. Oh, thank but we'll you. Say, we'll say not, uh, you guys have been in business for about 10 years. You're mm -hmm. 8 million, around 8 million in revenue across two locations, which is phenomenal. Congratulations. Thank you. thank you. You know, Devin, you guys have grown and done some tremendous things in the last 10 years that you guys have been in business. You've got two, you've got two locations across two States, which I don't even want to talk about that. I'm like, you've got two locations in two States. Like that's, that's different laws. I'm not even going to go into that, but, um, <laughs> and you're pacing at 8 million this year, which is phenomenal. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank I would you. love to know if you're open to sharing, was there ever a day that you almost quit the trades? Yeah. Um, this happens, um, you know, about once a year between my husband and I, and that's normally when we find ourselves burning the candle at three ends, we're overextending ourselves. And that's just an indication that we need to take a time off. We need to take time off and maybe we need to empower our people a little bit more. I was listening to a podcast a couple of weeks ago and Chad Peterson was on, I can't remember which one it was, but he had talked about how, um, if you're not, if you're not good at delegating and if you're not good at empowering your people, you're handcuffing yourself. If you're sick and tired of your phone ringing on and on and on and on and on, that's telling you that you have some work to do with your managers. And every time that we start to feel like that, we take time off and then we come back and we're like, all right, we're ready. Our mental health has been restored. I have good clarity and focus and vision on where I need to go. Um, I think that a lot of us as trades owners, especially for us plumbing, we're 24 seven. We don't have the luxury of just, you know, turning off the lights, the, the bakery's closed. No, our bakery is open 24 seven. We got to make sure we got the right people answering the calls and, and serving the customers. But, you know, I, I want to say that if anybody is feeling like they need to quit, you need to take care of yourself. Number one, don't forget how hard you work to get to where you are. And number two, look for support in somebody that you trust and that you're open to talk to, because I'm telling you, you are winning. Don't go back to that comparison anxiety where you feel like you're not doing enough. Know that you are doing enough. You just need to take a break. And then once you take that break, come back and you'll be ready to serve. Yeah. And you've taken breaks before, right? Yeah. So I, I took a sabbatical last year. I took a month off. I was really exhausted, overextending myself. I really needed to spend that time with my kids. I felt like I was getting out of touch with them, getting out of touch with myself. And I can't be, you know, more grateful for me, you know, kind of losing my mind, but then getting to that point. But I had to realize I was kind of creating problems in my organization too, just out of the anxiety of letting go of certain things. So when I came back to work, I was able to have a fresh mind, fresh perspective and be a better version of myself. So I wasn't putting that stress on my team or my family. And I'm really grateful that I did that. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. And thank you for sharing for the, I, and I understand like to folks listening, some people will be like, I can't take a sabbatical. And I understand that like, there's going to be limitations, but I think it is so important when you can, and when you have that support to be able to take it because mm -hmm. running a business, being an owner is really tough and growing. I mean, you guys are at the 8 million mark now, common plateau, 3 million, 5 million, like every time, as you grow, you're always going to hit these different ceilings that you're going to have to break through. And that takes so much willpower and um, energy out of you. And I, so I think it's really great to be honest with yourself and see where you're being disconnected in different areas. Um, so I applaud you for that. And thank, thank you for you. sharing that. Yeah, um, I agree. And if any, and if any business owner is out there listening and they feel like I can't take a break, you have to take that break because if you don't, you will break. You have to just really take that time. Even if it's just an extended weekend where you need to just turn your phone off, you know, just, Give a, give a list of to your your managers or somebody that you trust that can cover you, and I promise it'll be okay. Because if I can take a month off, you can take a month off. And let me tell you, the building didn't burn down when I came back. We had great profit. My team was happy, and that was also a reassurance to me. I am doing a lot right. 
yeah. and that my team, my team can do this in my absence. And all I wanted was to do was empower them. And I had to do that by stepping back. Imagine that, right? By removoving what? myself from the equation. <laughs> what? Me. You mean I, yeah, yeah I'm, the problem. I'm a problem. It's, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I think this is now the second Taylor Swift reference we've made on the show, which makes me very happy. All of our conversation today, I think, has really been dancing around this idea of delegation, which is something that's so hard as an owner operator, because, you know, you generally you start the business with you. It's with John and you guys are doing it yourself. You've got, you know, a couple other texts there, but mainly it's you guys. But as you grow, as you scale, it's just simple math. You can't do everything. So what have what have been some useful things that you've done to make delegation easier for you? Or like, tell me a little bit about your delegation process, whatever you think would be most helpful for folks that maybe are still like, have still have that iron grip on their business and don't necessarily want to relinquish it. You know, that I'm still a work in progress with delegating. If I find myself being overwhelmed, I take a step back and I ask, is there somebody in my business that wants to grow wants to learn that is asking for the responsibility. And then I look at anybody in the organization and I think, okay, this person had told me in their last one-on-one, -on -one, they really wanted to start learning this task more. Why am I gatekeeping this? Let's go ahead and share the knowledge, share the information, delegate the task over them. When I started delegating things over to my employees, I started to feel such a sense of relief in two ways. The first way was now I know that I have the right person who I've trained to follow the procedures, it's gonna do it the right way. Number two, now it's gonna free me up to put more time and, or, and more energy into building up another employee. That's what I love to do. I love training people. I love leading people. And if I can inspire someone to find the best version of themselves, even by delegating something as small as truck replenishments, which isn't small, it is huge because I've been doing truck replenishments myself over the years. Thank you, Service Titan, for making it possible for me. <laughs> if I can sit you know, and take six hours out of my life, just six hours, you know, or how many hours it takes to train on this one task and delegate it over, you're taking so much off of your plate. And if you continue to feel like you're still drowning, write a list, write a list of all the things that you're doing on your day and look around for the great people that are around you that are asking for more. Cause I'm telling you, your team is hungry to learn. You just have to look for the people that are wanting to step up. As you see their leadership skills developing, keep pulling them in for those one-on-ones, ask them, what are your goals? What are your visions you know, here within the company? And tell them what the company vision is. Tell them you know, what your one year, three year, five year plan with it for the company is and even pull up maybe a future organizational chart and show them, you know, here's a position we don't have yet. I really like, you know, to get you to this point. And the more that you are showing people the opportunity, the more loyalty they will also have to your brand because they see that you're willing to invest into them. Yep. Yep. And I think that transparency also is really critical when you give employees a path forward career pathing, you know, is, is one term for it. I think they can really get that buy-in and they can really like focus in on, okay, this is where I think I want to go. So I love that you're taking that approach. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I keep finding, keep thinking these great freaking questions, Devin. And then I keep, my brain just goes, it's like, no, nah, you're done. So at the start of this conversation, I said, we also wanted to talk a little bit about adapting a thriving mindset here, uh, which is something I really thought about after listening to yours and mine's uh, pre-interview for today's podcast. So tell me a little bit about mindset and how you are intelligent, how you are mind mindful about your mindset. Are you still, are you working with a leadership coach right now? Like what are you doing regu to regularly exercise your leadership muscles? Well, great question. So I have a subscription to masterclass. If you guys have not gotten in on masterclass, I love masterclass. They have small little training classes that you can take every morning. So this morning, the class that I took was how to be more resilient. And it has all kinds of different videos from really well-known people all over the world. And they're giving you advice on how they're able to pivot, how they're able to stay resilient, and how they're able to maintain their emotional IQ while they're going through really difficult things. So I love doing master classes. I actually have a plan. I'm going to do a master class with my managers next week. So I, lo I love listening to all of these people. I'm exercising my leadership skills. I attend therapy every week. So I talk about all of my issues that I'm having. My therapist is the best. 
He'll come back and he'll tell me, hey, here's where I'm going to validate you. Because we all need validation from people outside 100%. of our, our life. You know, am I crazy? Am I not crazy? He'll say, here's where I'm going to validate you. And here's where I think that you can grow. And it's been really great. He'll draw up things for me. And if anybody who's listening who has not sought out therapy, because you think that therapy is not beneficial, I will tell you, it may not be beneficial because you haven't found the right therapist. You got to find the right person that is willing to listen, understand, and then give you some honest information back. So keep trying to go to therapy if you guys are struggling. But for leadership, I have my, my coach at NextStar. I have a, um, a million people that I talk to in the trades every day. I have this individual. His name is Trent. He was with NextStar. Now he's with the Home Service Freedom Group through Tommy Mello. He texts me maybe two, three times a week. Where are you at? Where's your mindset? Make sure you're praising your team. It's like just having friends like that in the industry is great. And that's what I really loved about the trades. Uh, meeting these people, it's like being in high school. But then you get to all grow up and then you get to see all of your high school friends do all this really cool stuff. And you're like, wow, I really love my friend doing so good at this. And this That's friend awesome. is going to, yeah, if that even makes any sense, I just feel like I'm, I'm building such a great sense of friendship with all these really smart people. And it's been such an amazing journey for me because I'm learning from them and then they're learning from me. And that's how it should be being open to number one, understanding I don't have all the answers. And number two, I want to be a better leader. And how am I going to do that? Number three, put, put, put all those thoughts into actual action and practice patience and resiliency. I think that's wonderful, wonderful advice. Thank uh, you. Also, good shout out to Masterclass. I'm also trying to grow my leadership skills. So it's nice to know that there's uh, maybe some easy intro levels into how to even approach this topic before, you know, going before going all out and getting a leadership coach. Uh, so that's actually really great. I'm going to take that takeaway. Thank you. Devin, is there anything we should have talked about that we didn't talk about? You know, I, I don't know. I feel like we went through a lot of things. My best advice to people is we all have imposter syndrome. We are all questioning ourselves. We're all asking, am I the right person for this? Just remember you are where you are because God put you where you are. And just be positive, be grateful, and recept, accept the love that people are giving you and give it right back. Just be a minister to the people that need your help. What a wonderful message to end this show on. Devin Thompson, thank you so much for being a guest on Toolbox for the Trades. I cannot wait to see where you guys are at a year from now. And thank you for sharing some of your incredible wisdom. Uh, I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Yes, thank you, Jackie.